welcome back to the Liverpool Community Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Johnson Lynch, here on Liverpool Online. As you know, we're into a new season and a new rebranding and everything. And as a part of that, we're having new shows. And with new shows come new hosts and new presenters. And I'm joined by one of the loveliest of the new presenters you haven't gotten to see yet. And I'm here to introduce her. And her name is Claire Bidgeras. How you doing, Claire? Hi, everyone. I'm doing really good. Thank you. How are you? I'm I'm good, Claire. You know what I mean. Nobody's ever asked me that question. So, like, <laughs> it's my inner therapist. It's for, you, you know what, Claire? I, you know what? We're gonna get along. I know. I don't feel. I don't feel. Only you care. But like uh, you know, I mean, you know, I would like to also say because I've said it many a times that I also dabble into like a little bit of therapy, transpersonal psychology, by the way, and everything. When I took a course and all that, but um, so I'm gonna enjoy this conversation because Claire. Uh, it's not just a performance artist, very talented and stuff like that. She is also a creative psychotherapist, mm -hmm. which I'm going to find out more about because she got some letters after her name and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But she's still in school, aren't you, Claire? I am just finishing my master's at the moment. Yeah. Nice. I did my master's at John Moore's in a thing, but not in psychotherapy or in any type of psychology. <laughs> but either way, it is the fact that it wasn't creativity. So, hey, we get along. Now, the other reason why I wanted to talk to you, Claire, is because, mm -hmm. you know, Claire is one of our new hosts here at uh, Liverpool Online. And her show happens to be called The Creative Community Podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I low-key kind of stole half of the... The title there, didn't I? Sorry about that one. You know what? I mean, where that? <laughs> no, no, what it is, it's your producer, Blake. Um, but like the thing about it is, is that because I used to be just a community podcast right. and everything, but then like, uh, you know, I felt like, you know what? We're coming out of Liverpool. I mm -hmm. have an American accent. Let's not confuse people. And so that's why I wanted to change the title to Liverpool Community Podcast. So right. that way give it a little bit more of his identity mm -hmm. but then then i saw hey we got a new show oh do we it's called the creative community podcast is it so i said we need to hook up <laughs> so no one told, yeah no one told me about the the clash of names but i'm glad it feels like we're like accompanying you know what we're than, a like, team girl yeah that's what yeah, it is absolutely that's what it is because like we both do one-on-one -on -one interviews and mm -hmm. stuff like that um you know basically we believe in the 10 set of shows um and everything which you were about to be completing of you know that's why we haven't seen the shows yet but they're about to launch this week i believe mm -hmm. but like in that aspect is is that um you decided well tell us a bit about your take on the your creative community podcast when i asked you about like the type of conversations that you're having in your one-to-ones mm -hmm. yeah so i mean my initial sort of intention with the podcast as well um was to just like platform local creatives local organizations that might be up and coming or maybe they're already established um to give themselves the opportunity to have other people get to know them for me get to get to know them but also for other people to watch in and listen to our discussions and our discourse and be like i feel inspired or i'm taking something away from this that i'm going to reflect on um so whenever i would sort of interview people i never really had a like intention with what we were going to discuss it was almost like you know if they had anything in particular they might bring and let me know beforehand but i always yeah. would say let's make it as fluid as possible yeah. and quite often we'd speak on topics around like activism and art or culture and how that affects things yeah. um but also sort of around the the, the basic sort of necessities of being a freelancer, the experiences you get with that, whether that's being burnt out or being multidisciplinary as an artist and not knowing which hat to put on where and how to manage all that. Yeah. Um, and it's just been, it's been a really great experience for me to sort of have this opportunity as well and uh, connect on a one-to-one -one level with a lot of these creatives around the scene. See, what I find interesting about doing these one-to-ones um, with people, I mean, like, it's the fact that, that I, the way I look at it is everyone's important. For sure. And what happens is, no, but what happens is we never feel our own self-importance. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like I'm just a joiner or I'm just a painter. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just something. And it's kind of like, yeah, but what you're doing means something to you and it might yeah. mean something to someone else so like i always looked at uh, my uh community podcast is like 
here's someone in the community that I'm interested in hearing more from. And I think mm-hmm. that you want to hear more from. And like, and that's a, clearly also you as well. Mm-hmm. Is it that, you know, let me just find out a little bit about you and have mm-hmm. just these casual, you know, conversations. So, but I'm also dyspraxic. So like, I need to mind map my ideas. So <laughs> I like to go around and circle, go around in circles and stuff like that, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. to be able to uh, figure that stuff out. But um, that being said, I'm also blind, so it's like I can't even read my notes. So, like, <laughs> um, <coughs> let me just ask you a little bit about your psychotherapy because mm-hmm. I think it's interesting is, is that your your role as a therapist, you're working more intergenerate, intergenerationally. 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 <laughs> Look yeah. at that. We both can't get it. My, she says, I got it. Anyway, uh, you know, we're under 11s, but also teenagers, 16 to 25, mm-hmm. uh, as well as 50 plus. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, that means on any given day, you could be dealing with a different type of person. Yeah. So I I think as a therapist, it's really important to that I maintain my own boundaries for my own mm-hmm. mental health. So I have set days for different clientele. So Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesday, sort of your standard working hours and work with the under 11s. Um, Thursdays and Saturdays, I'm working with 50 plus and then the 16 to 25s uh, implement usually on a Tuesday evening. Um and a Monday do you evening. do group work or anything like that? I don't. I'm training group work and I have facilitated workshops in primary schools, in secondary schools um, and things like that. But at the moment, most of my work is one to one, whether that's on the phone, via Zoom or directly. Is that because of the uh, noted word we don't talk about or? Indeed, indeed. That word, indeed. Um, but also accessibility. Some people can't uh, access some of the sites that I um, have the therapy sessions for. So it's easier for them um, around their routine and around where they can access to, to have mm. it over the phone. Or Well, obviously, a lot of people have like private situations that they're going mm. through and everything. But I love group work myself, you know, yeah. as a transpersonal psychologist. I mean, I love like, you know, working in groups, whether it's men's groups or, you know, mm. I, uh, people, because I believe that as a community, you know, like we kind of like support one another, you know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like if you were an AA or OA or whatever, something yeah. like that, you know, uh, your situation is not rare. You know, but a lot right. of people think it is. Mm-hmm. This is just me. It only happens to me. Mm-hmm. And that's always the thing you have to kind of always, that's the first war you have to kick down is yeah. that you yeah. probably experienced that yourself. Yeah. In your yeah. one-to-ones. Yeah, of course. Um, and I notice, I mean, I completely agree with the whole concept of group work. I think it's really important. I mean, I've spent the whole day today in group work you know workshopping doing creative therapy and and things like that um but yeah you get that in in sort of those one-to-ones that battle with their inner self and also with the world around them of almost like no one gets it no one understands what I'm I'm going through and I guess that's where I come in and, and and sort of provide that space for them to sort of understand that what's going going for them what's going on for them at the moment is is valid is important but also there are other people that you can connect with that Mm. you can support each other with and like you're saying yeah so not to put you on the spot but Mm. often every time i do Mm. Uh, (laughs) uh, what do you recommend um so there's this thing there's a difference with between being an active listener Mm -hmm. and a reflective listener yeah what do you recommend that as a therapist Mm. uh one should be when supporting others oh well i mean you so really- it doesn't have to be you but just let's say if uh somebody you know uh wanted to talk to a friend or mm-hmm. whatever what do you recommend that people be an active or reflective listener i think it's really important to be an active listener i think quite often when you have conversations um it can be difficult to have a response in your head or something you really want to say so then you don't Mm. even listen you just wait you're just waiting for the person to stop talking and you're like okay now i'm gonna say this right and i think there's something really valuable in listening to what they say and responding in the moment to that Mm. rather than just being like okay finish speaking because i really want to say this i really want to say this um but also what i think is really important is not every 
single person who's going through something wants to speak to a friend and speak to a therapist wants a solution sometimes they just want to be heard there we go that's the answer I was looking and, for um, and um and i i think i think a lot of people do focus on trying to fix things yeah um, that is wrong and i i think the the whole process of sp- speaking out loud to someone else can Gets in it itself yeah provide yeah. a solution or provide some sense of healing for that person and that might be all they might need and it i might just f- needed to just uh get that out exactly and you know maybe it might settle them for 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 a little bit and it might come back out again it's like okay well let's talk about it again and let's look at some ways we can things we can implement and at that point you know that makes sense but yeah yeah but i would like to just say you know if you're trained anyway it's mm-hmm. just that I'm more of a reflective listener, you know, in a sense where it's kind of like, it's not like I'm trying to fix anyone. I'm just trying to listen. But like in that aspect is, is that like, as you said, people just want to be heard. Mm. That's what I've always experienced is people just want to be heard. But to show them that they're heard is to reflect back what they said. Of course. So like, so when you reflect what they said and like it's from a perspective of I've heard it and I'm reflecting back. It's not me solving your problem, but it's me helping you say, did I say that? (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, and you can reflect in different ways. So, for example, one way that I can be an active listener while also being reflective is while someone's talking, nodding my head, going, "Mm -hmm, Mm mm-hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, yeah. Or I mirror their body language to show them that I'm listening. Yeah. Or, you know, things like that. So there's ways of of doing both. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, I love having cycle talk. You know, maybe that should be a show <laughs> and stuff. Um, so what I thought was interesting is is that, um, Jesus Christ. Is the handwriting getting to you? It is a little bit. <laughs> yep. Okay. So that's right. Back to your show. So, you know, uh, how has it been for you uh, doing um, your show? Like, you know, um, you know, did it, do you think it, from your perspective, I know you haven't seen the final mm-hmm. outcome, but you've experienced the show. Was it what you expected it to be uh, mm-hmm. from that perspective? I think um, it probably exceeded any expectations I had. Uh, I tried not to go in with that mindset of like, it has to be this, this and this, because I have a real battle with perfectionism and trying to get things right. And I put that in quotes because what does that even mean? Um, But yeah, coming out of the experience and as well, like in the final episodes, episodes of like recording and reflecting back, um, it's been, it's been so insightful. Mm. Um, And I think it just highlights again, you know, um, the importance of community and interconnectedness yeah i think because you know the connections that were being created or even sort of strengthened within these interviews don't just stay in the room you know it it gets taken out and we remember these conversations or we then plan something based off something we've said in within that session and it's like yeah it's been great it's not just like an episode it like there's stuff happening after that as well between yeah. the, those people and that's been that's been something that i've been sort of really excited about as well well, well i guess what i'm curious about is, is that like you were mentioned you know out of the various different guests you've had mm-hmm. uh there was something that was unique and interesting to you was what you had kind of like learned or discovered about the black experience mm. like you managed to uh, have conversations in particular with a couple of female um black artists like mm-hmm. yourselves like uh lizzie luminate or mm-hmm. Nee maxine mm-hmm. but um you know as well as uh you know other fem- uh, females like from comics youth and everything so yeah. But you mentioned specifically about the black experience and learning. Can you tell me what did you learn about that? Mm, I think, if anything, what I learned was, it's kind of funny based off the conversation we just had, but it's almost, what I've learned is, like, the shared experience is so important. I have always struggled with my racial identity. I mean, I was born and grew up in London, which is super diverse. And when I moved to Liverpool to study, um it was only at that point i began to sort of really reflect on who i am 
and mm. what is my racial identity it never really crossed my mind enough to be like i must it didn't feel like i had to pick something if that makes sense <laughs> well um, now let's help us out uh, mm-hmm. when you mean super diverse <laughs> when you mean super diverse what do you mean I mean, I didn't feel like a minority when I was in, in London. London. Really? When I was what in part of school, London were you in? I was in North London, Hackney. Hackney, okay. Mm-hmm. So there was so there's a lot of uh, uh, black people in Hackney. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. what is your what is your identity? Because I believe I think you said at one point you're mixed, right? Yeah, I'm from mixed heritage, so uh, I'm half Mauritian, <coughs> and then on my mom's side. Um, She's mixed further from that. So she's Kenyan, Portuguese, Indian. Yeah. Um, and I mm-hmm. remember you were saying that on one of your shows. I yeah, believe. it was. And, and I was kind of like, well, you know, um, all right. So because your mother's white, is she? She, yeah. Or her white skins. skin. Yeah, yeah, her skin's But I mean, so white. I asked, I think I asked you, could she be Afrikaans? Like, like mm. Charlize Theron. Yeah. You know, who's white skinned, but she's South African. Yeah. I mean, but, and I know your mom's from Kenya, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, that's a little bit below the line in it. Yeah. You yeah, know, no, uh, is, yeah. uh, Lower Sudan kind of thing. So is she, but I think you said she's not South African or something. No, she's not. Um, And also, like, her, her mom sort of, so my grandma has, like, a. a so then, like, uh, if your mom, um, um, you know, comes from Kenya and everything. So that's mm-hmm. not South African is what you're telling me. No, no, it's not. I, I think uh, I didn't know much about my grandfather from my maternal side. Um, but he sort of carried more of those sorts of um, Portuguese mm. sort of, sort of, I don't even know how to describe it, but like visually you could see he... More so like it, a more of a... Sp- Mediterranean, yeah, Spanish, definitely. you know, um, Arabic kind of feel. So exactly. it's a mixture and like, yeah. Yeah, and it felt like my mom definitely took that took that, that aspect um, from her when, when she's grown up. Because her siblings aren't, aren't sort of all the same as well. There's like the varied shades within them all. Um, and her, her mom, so right. my do grandma you, Do is, you have siblings? Yeah, I do. I have three other siblings. Uh, and what, what shades are they? Again, we're all... We're all like different, so like my sister's like the darker skin? sort of. No, no. So we we'll all we all have some sort of shade of black uh, yeah. and brown, um, but like my sister's darkest. Yeah. Out of all of us, and but we're all and even our hair texture is completely different. Your what? Hair texture. Yeah. Like yeah, my yeah. sister's hair texture compared to mine, compared to my brother's. You know, it's all so varied, and I think what's interesting about that is that i imagine our racial identities are probably different as well from that in how we choose to present ourselves yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i just i just i just find um it fascinating in in, in the aspect of like when uh mixed uh, race kids you know it's like you know because you grow up this, this is my family this is who we are mm-hmm. but then when you have to go to school Mm-hmm. You know, those n- naughty kids want to separate you and say, you're not as dark as she or as oh, light as her or whatever. Yeah. Stuff like. Did you have to face any of that? It, yeah, it was, it's actually quite frustrating when I look back on it. I think at mm. the time I was just like, you're not black. And I'm like, okay, cool. And that was it. And I was like, okay, fine, yeah. whatever. I can't really co- like um, involve myself in discourse or people say, well, does it really matter? Because you're not, you're not black. So does it matter? Like what you're saying, and it was almost like, and they feel they could say whatever they could say about the other race because right. you're not black, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it was super frustrating. Um, right. I and imagine. I think um, I didn't feel that frustration as much until I sort of became more confident in who I am and wanting to um, engage with that more and be like, actually, yeah, I am, and that's really ignorant for you to say, and it's mm. really disrespectful it is but they're know? kids and kids that's what they do isn't it i mean as an adult do you you probably don't face it as much or do you feel still that you face those um, schoolyard antics to be honest not 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 in liverpool but again like some of those experiences i had of well you're not black was when i was in my late teens when mm. we're like you know 18 years old and it's like you know we are adults we do know a little bit better yeah. um but you know when i'm in in liverpool it's it's never felt like a question it's never felt like i never hesitate to speak on an issue mm-hmm. um around racism anti-racism anything like that or the experience of of 
being black or being a black creative because it's sort of I feel nurtured in Liverpool. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not up for debate. My identity is not up for anyone's. You probably found that, like you know, I'm I'm from the South End, mm-hmm. um, Tostes, uh L8, and everything. And L8 is a very strong um, mixed race community. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, you don't get that kind of judgment because everybody's like, yeah, yeah. I wonder what yeah. family you're from, because <laughs> they're like a lot of big families. Yeah. Um, and everything, uh, uh, mixed cultures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can imagine that you wouldn't really get that much mm-hmm. going on. But w- when so lastly about the women, um, like Lizzie and uh, Nima Maxine, mm-hmm. um, what was their experience like to yours that you might have related to or? So they they sort of also have um, a lighter shade of black. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, being able to talk with other people who might relate on on a topic like that it's sort of like also women who are creatives and might have that again that identification of like well i'm not black enough to be black i'm not white enough to be white except yeah no like sort of thing yeah it is just it is just sort of reconsolidating to 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 hear these experiences and to be like me too some of the stuff they were talking about um growing up in different areas experiencing different levels of diversity um it's interesting and it's the fact that we've all come to liverpool or have been in liverpool and have felt that safety um in who we are as well it's just crazy like you know we we often say that we're in the new millennium Mm -hmm. uh you know where hopefully someday where we won't have to have these discussions and you know Mm -hmm. really you know it doesn't matter but it will always i guess like be there you know um Mm -hmm. um in that fashion but hopefully less negative Mm -hmm. um so let's talk about you as a performer you Mm -hmm. know like uh as i was asking you about um you know open mics and Mm -hmm. you know and everything else like that but I want you to talk about that, but also, too, as I was at... No, no, talk about that first, and I'll ask you my superhero question. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, going to open mics was how I sort of platformed myself, found my voice when it came to uh, spoken word. It's also how I met, like, a lot of the guests that I had is was through connecting at open mics and be like your work was great so was yours and like let's let's chat kinda, some time kind of like ali doesn't he run a particular type of open he mic? he does he yeah and again he's he's sort of we met at another creative event like the, the start of liverpool's year of spoken word and mm. that's how we met on that at that event and then now you know i go to his events he's allowing me to sort of um be one of the featured poets for his upcoming event in in the next few months it's just like exciting um going to open mics because it's um it's a space for inspiration i often leave open mic nights with like notes on my phone of being like oh this has sparked something for me and i want to write about this or i want to write about that are you one of those people that have the uh the poem on their phone and they go yeah ASMR. I mean, no. I'm not, I'm not, okay. <laughs> no, I, that's why I like to call myself a spoken word performer rather than a poet. Do you know it, like, or do you have to read it? <laughs> uh, both. If yeah. it's a new piece that I like to bring, to, I like to bring new pieces to open mic nights so that I'm, I'm reading it from my phone and just testing it out. Because yeah. um, it's it's a, it's most of the time it feels like a safe space. Whereas when I'm like uh, going out for like a specific gig or something, I've learned my pieces and. I call myself a performer because I like to move around the stage. Um, my face completely changes. My body language changes. And I also think about my performance visually. I like to have any form of visual I can, if possible. Well, give me an idea because this is what I was trying to say. I don't even think you got me when I was doing my ASMR joke. But like, uh, <laughs> like, have you ever heard of a movie called Love Jones? No. Ah, uh, she's so young. And her eyes from the 90s, Lorenz Tate and Nia Long. <laughs> Kind of look like Neil Long a little bit, but um, you know, he was a spoken word artist and right. everything like that. But you know, he would do these like, you know, hey, these love poems, you know, and, da, 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 and stuff. And it was funny because my niece, mm-hmm. believe it or not, does this like sexual love poetry. I don't watch it, so like, <laughs> <laughs> but I was just wondering. So, what style of 
uh, poetry uh, do you do that as a performance artist? Mm, um, I would say theme I wise, I guess you could say, or yeah, um, a lot of my writing, my work stems from sort of uh, trying to encourage anti racism. Um, I like to talk about topics around feminism. Some messages. Me- yeah, I like to to use my creative work for change where I can or to get people thinking. Um, mm. For some people, some of the topics I talk about never cross their mind until you put it into words in a certain way and they're like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know. I mean, I was thinking I should put her on the spot. What do you guys think? I say do it. She, she, she's begging me now. All right, all right, Claire. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure you have some something in your in your toolbox that you can hit us with. I do. What you think I was saying? <laughs> now she's going all shy on us. Oh, what did oh, you no. think I was saying? I said I could put her on the spot. She says, "Do it." All right? What did you think? <laughs> I was acting too big, and now the situations come. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm asking you to sing or anything like that. I'm pretty sure you got some some kind of messaging you right about now. Ooh, that's your camera. A message or bit of spoken word yeah a bit of spoken word a bit of you spoken said your word. spoken word was about messages okay. you talk about racism right okay. you know and all that okay. kind of stuff you did okay. say right yeah yeah okay i'll do it all right that's <laughs> your camera right there girl mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay um i'm trying to think what message which one which one do i do okay any message is good claire okay um My skin colour is a barrier to so many goals. To get the job, to meet the payroll. And my gender already makes it so hard. See, I'm turned away without giving a chance. No equal pay. No, not today. See, the man said no, so I must just sit and manage some way. Because sometimes it feels like the world was built for the high class white cis men. My skill sets won't matter, the interview pretends To consider my application, the unconscious bias transcends. And my surname... It feels like a warning sign. Because I'll know I'm not English, they'll know I'm not white. And my hair, it must be straight and tied up neatly. It has to follow rules that were made without thinking of me. But my hair frizzes up, see it naturally curls. How do I stay presentable in the white world? Because being a woman is tough and being a black woman is exhausting. Thanks. That was really good. And it was ASMR, see, I tell you. Because you're like, yeah. It was Love Jones. Go watch the movie. <laughs> I'm going to have to now. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Listen, that was, really, that was really deep and powerful. And Thank stuff you. like that, you know. Mm. Um, you know, I just, I think, I think uh, when people hear stuff like that and, you know, it's wrapped around the message, you know, they go, oh. You know, that's like mm-hmm. smoke trails are coming out of my mouth going, <laughs> mm-hmm. Beatnik poetry, you know what I mean? No, no, very good, very good. I have to come watch your show now. Where can people who actually see your work? Is it online or anything? I have a few like on my Instagram, but I'm on. Yeah, but I've only seen pictures on your Instagram. Maybe I didn't click on any. There's videos. like I have I have only have two videos, but I have like highlight reels at the top of my page before the photos that you can click on and like look at all the spoken word events that I have done or that I do regularly. Highlight rules. Reels. Oh, highlight reels. Yeah, okay. so it's like a little circle. You know, I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought this was some learning for me. I have highlight rules. <laughs> <laughs> you can only touch on it. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, so I have reels. that. Um, I was in like the process of creating my own website, but at the or same YouTube. time... YouTube, what about YouTube or anything? YouTube, the thing is I have a YouTube channel, but it's just like cringy videos from when I was like young of like me singing or like vlogging or... You won't be able to find it because it's not under my name. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, as as we know that people will go out hunting for it. But like <laughs> the thing about it is, is that no, I mean because as this artist that you do, because you said you've been here in Liverpool for six years mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I mean, I'm just curious as to like, uh, you, it's kind of like what my superhero question was. Okay. Right. So it's kind of like you're a woman of a dual identity. Mm-hmm. Right. You're by day she's a clinical psychotherapist, mm-hmm. and by night she's an open mic 
ASMR, you know, message <laughs> uh, a speaker. But, um, and basically in those two sides, it's like, what did you prefer? Really? You know, what do you enjoy most? Mm. Um, to be honest, I do. Sorry to cheap out on this, but I enjoy cheap both. Yeah. I do. I can't. I feel like they just <laughs> completely like they're two parallels. Yeah. Right. But I couldn't see myself doing one without the other. I feel like I I use my spoken word like as a freelancer to vocalize myself, to platform myself, to spread messages of change, right? And I provide that for other people when I'm a therapist. I provide that space for them creative creatively. Mm-hmm. Um and I use I use some of the things that I use in in therapy for myself. You know, sometimes I write spoken word pieces, and it's just for me, and it's just for the therapeutic process of I'm having a bit of a crap time, so I'm just going to write this out, and then I'm just going to leave it, and I'm done with it. Yeah, you know. Well, I guess I guess my whole thing about it is let's go back to the superhero nature of things, because mm-hmm. um, that's who I am as a fan. It's like the Superman and Clark Kent. Bruce mm-hmm. Wayne and Batman, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman and Diana Prince. You know, they are two sides of the same person. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people will always often say, it's like, oh, well, you know, like Batman is always Batman mm. and his mask is Bruce Wayne. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, or yeah. Superman is always Superman because he's born Superman and his mask is Clark Kent. Right, so right, right. the mask is generally the, the 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 weaker side or what could be appear as the weaker side of the stronger personality. Uh, so uh, it's kind of like, yes, you are two sides of the same coin. That's an obvious pat answer. Mm. But it's like, it's like, which one are you really so like um and 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 it's, it becomes a debate topic really for people yeah. it's like you yeah. know is superman superman or is he actually clark kent you know right. which one is the real person mm. and stuff like he and a lot of people will say that you know clark kent is the mask because i can't be superman all the time damn it <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I can't save the world. I can't be out there caring for others. I need to sometimes just, you know, be me. And that will make me feel maybe you have to look weak or vulnerable, mm-hmm. but it, it also gives me less attention. Go yeah. Ahead. And everything. Yeah. So this is what I mean. I don't think people probably look at it this way, but it is that way, you know. And if you looked at Batman and Bruce and Diana and Wonder Woman, it's the same thing because one is the clear out there person, right? And the other is the vulnerable person mm-hmm. that I could use this person to whew, breathe. Got you. I would definitely say that, like, the mask self, as you described it, would definitely be my therapeutic work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other sort of part is spoken word from a f- creative freelancer. I think to get into therapy and to do therapy, I'm bringing my therapeutic self. Whereas when I'm doing spoken word and performance, um, I'm more most at my most authentic. Yeah. Um, inner inner and outer self. No, know? no, exactly. And I would agree with you because it's like after actually hearing that one poem, I would agree. You know, mm. because it's like it, it has such power and mm. depth to it. Whereas, obviously, when you're in your role of helping and supporting others, you know, like, you know, you're, you're doing that, you know, it's in your nature. Mm. But then again, is it that you're still having to do that in service of their needs. Absolutely. And it's yeah. not like a service of yours. Your right. your only service is the fact that, that I have to have my intentions right. Mm. Is that about right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, no good answer. Mm. Also, good question. I always start to praise <laughs> myself. So, <laughs> only because nobody else is praising me. Self love, self love. That's right. Thank yeah. you. All right. So, last question really is: is that like around? Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like to do this, but because this is kind of like also like a, a series review of like your guests, mm. I was asking you like out of your guests, is there any favorites that you had? Yeah, I had a couple to be honest with you. Um, I really enjoyed my interview with Flood Theatre um, and uh, <laughs> Comics Youth, Where Were the Girl Bands and Nee Maxine. I enjoyed all of those. The first three that I listed, sort of I either knew of them or they were my friends and the energy in the room for that interview was just like, it was really high energy. Um yeah. 
and we it just felt it felt really nice like when we ended the discussion it wasn't like a oh wow we really sort of mm, went in that there. was hard like, that was hard press that oof, one, yeah. yeah it was like we came like oh my gosh i wish we could have like kept going like we could speak for ages and ages yeah. and i love those sorts of conversations to be having um and also i felt like they're all quite linked around sort of um safe spaces within the creative sort of realm i guess um specifically to liverpool um and i just felt like it was such relevant topics we were discussing i mean i really enjoyed um the episode i did with me maxine as well because it just felt again the energy was completely different to those those other ones i mentioned but in a really like contrasting way in a, in a positive way i'd say you know we really felt like people i guess i hope when people watch it they can see that we're sort of learning about each other um and understanding yeah. each other and it felt it felt really nice and at the end it was sort of like wow yeah wow i think i think i think a lot of people often talk about that like you know um because here in the situation women interviewing women you know uh there's a lot of respect due into that as if like there shouldn't be well of course there should be <laughs> but so in that aspect so when you have a positive experience of doing it it just seems to be like yeah that was right so that was mm. really good and stuff you know well so either way is um you know, Claire Beardress. You know, this has been really uh, a great interview mm -hmm. with my fellow colleague, a uh, new presenter here at Liverpool yes. Online and everything. Um, her show should be in um, within the week or very fairly soon and stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, what's great about that is that Creative Community Podcast, Liverpool Community Podcast, we're siblings not sibling rivalry and yes. everything like that, yeah. you know? So like, this is my show. And then she was with me on her show yeah. and everything. And I like, it's good to get to know one another and everything like that. So, uh, lastly, what I'll say is because you gave us a bit of your talent there, mm -hmm. uh, give us your social handles so people can find you and those highlight reels. Absolutely. So you can find me on all social medias, at Claire Beardras, um, and that's not true because you're on you're on you're on uh, Insta as Clary. That's just my my username is at Claire Beardras though. You can change. Right, the, see, like, so that shows you how old I am <laughs> and everything, and I do I not say, understand like, oh gosh, social media. Me. No, but it is yeah. My ats are all at at Claire Beardras, and I just you can change the. At thing. least, at least, at least, there's not another Claire Bergeras out there and everything like that. There's so you're not. easier to find. I hate those names where it's like you try to find somebody and it's like there's like about five to ten different versions of and the like, which one? same name. Yeah. And which then one? they never they never put their picture up and everything. And I'm like, who? Are you? It's like yeah. guess who? Exactly. Just fingers crossed, it's the right one. <laughs> yeah. Lastly, let me ask you that question. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> People who don't want to like, yeah, uh, uh, I want to have pictures of flowers <laughs> or my dog and everything right. as my avatar. What do you think about that? Hmm. I think it's a creative choice. But for me personally. She's just being nice to you um, people out there. You know, me personally, you won't catch me doing that. If you do, then someone's hacked my Instagram or something. <laughs> so if you, FYI, if you ever see like a flower mm. or a random pet or something it's not me <laughs> help me he's <laughs> like wait someone's hacked my my socials that's how i saw somebody's flower at that day i thought it was a grave so like, <laughs> well, you never know if there's a real person behind it you're like you're under the me, grave but, you, like, you never know if there's a real know, person under it. Oh, no, it could be a robot you know you get robot robot accounts oh yeah 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 bots yeah, yeah. Bots, bots all around mm. so anyway so uh claire bigeras will be her new show uh the creative community podcast yeah. will be starting fairly soon and everything else like that and uh you know thank thank you for coming on uh our show here the liverpool community podcast this has been claire bidgeras i'm chase ross lynch and you know what oh we out of here <laughs>